India is now home to a 200 billion plus and growing tech industry. Yes, you heard that right. FY 2022 has been a year of milestones for the Indian technology industry. With 51% share in total services export and 9% share in 9% share relative to national GDP, the technology sector has been leading the road to recovery for the Indian economy. For the first time in history, the Indian technology sector added $30 billion in a single financial year. That's whopping number. Hello everyone. Welcome to another edition of Tech Talks with NASCOM Insights. I'm Naman, Lead Community and Insights Marketing in NASCOM, and I'll be your host for the day. Even COVID-19 pandemic could not stop the resilience shown by the Indian tech sector as it recorded 15.5% year-on-year growth, which is, by the way, the highest since FY 2011. Indian technology sector added 4,50,000 new employees in FY 2022, the highest addition ever, of which 44% were women. Interestingly, with 1.8 million women workers, the Indian technology sector is now the largest private sector employer for women in the country. Yes, you heard that right. With that said, no better way to start the discussion with three ladies from NASCOM Insights team. Predna Bakshi, Senior Analyst, GCC, NASCOM Insights, Neha Jain, Senior Analyst, IT Services and Patents at NASCOM Insights, and Vandana Babu, Senior Analyst, ERND, NASCOM Insights. With this, we will kickstart this discussion with the first question that focuses around the milestones that the Indian technology industry has achieved in FY2022. And I'd like to request Prerna if you can share some light on this particular segment of the milestones and the key achievements that we have, uh, you know, the, the sector has achieved over the last one year. Hi, Naman. Thank you for the warm welcome. Uh, so I think FI 2022 has truly been a blockbuster year for the IT industry, which has witnessed more than 2x revenue growth from the pre-pandemic levels. With USD 30 billion net addition, the industry has breached the $200 billion revenue mark in FI 2022. In fact, it has added the last $100 billion in just 10 years, as opposed to the first $100 billion that took nearly 30 years to achieve. Moreover, what is even more interesting is that this inexorable tech growth has been sector agnostic as all the subsectors, be it IT services, BPM, ERND, software products or e-commerce have witnessed double digit growth in 2022. Further, India continues to be in pole position, topping the global sourcing market with a sizable 59% share and a domestic tech market valued at nearly USD 50 billion. I think as we are shaping the decade, there are multiple levers driving the growth of India's tech industry, of which a diversified and collaborative tech ecosystem is one of the major drivers. With the third largest tech, hard, uh, tech startup hub in the world, comprising of nearly 25,000 plus tech startups and more than 78 unicorns, over 6,000 Indian tech services companies across IT, BPM and ERND, and in excess of 2,000 product companies and an equal number of GCCs and MNCs, India is well and truly making its mark in the global tech arena. Even in terms of tech capabilities, India is a key digital talent hub. Uh, India with nearly 5 million direct employees, of which 4.5 L, the highest addition ever, has been made in FY 2022. Moreover, with the second highest working age population in the world at 65.5%, next only to China, and nearly 2 million STEM talent pool, India is well endowed with a rich demographic dividend. To top it all, as you rightly pointed out, uh, with 1.8 million women employees, India's IT sector is the largest private sector employer, bringing together talent from 150 plus nationalities and with 200k women hired in FI 2022, diversity and inclusion is truly a predominant priority for India's tech sector. Uh, thanks, Prerna. I think uh, the interesting point that you mentioned was that the first 100 billion that we made was, you know, took 30 years for the Indian tech industry to achieve that the target and that and the next hundred billion we've achieved in the last decade itself, you know, since 2010 and 11. So if I'm not wrong, so I think that's a very interesting number, and I think that these are the highlights that needs to be, uh, you know, pointed out. 
So in continuation to this, I think I'd like to move on to Neha and bring her into the discussion. So as we all know that COVID-19 has had a great impact on the technology sector, but we saw uh, not just a fair bit of resiliency, but in fact a positive and a record, you know, and a consistent growth within the, uh, the technology sector post COVID times. And I think Neha, I would like to understand from you how organizations have managed their operation efficiencies during this time, because we've all, uh, you know, seen the, the, the kind of challenges that have been there. So what's your take on this? Sure. Sure. Thanks, Naman, for the question. And, uh, you know, as we just heard, right now talk about how industry reached various milestones during the year. One of the key drivers for the same, and it continues to be, is the growing demand for digital transformation, which has accelerated post the pandemic. So this growing demand we all know is has uh, led to so many new milestones. But one of the challenges that had, uh, you know, that has also come with this uh, growing demand is uh, the growing demand for the tech talent and in turn an increased attrition. So considering these supply side challenges, I think the companies very well managed to you know, maintain operational efficiencies during the years with a with a focus on managing their margins. Now, the key key factors that they focused on while they wanted to maintain these margins were, you know, increase. They focused on increasing utilization. So, what we saw in 2021 was that at 87 percent, we had the all time high utilization. You know, for top companies. So that that is that is some uh, level which they reached, you know, which has which was never reached. So we maintained a really good utilization levels for uh, the workforce. Another thing that they focused was, you know, as as there was a lot of uh, you know challenges uh, in terms of uh, uh, working onshore with the pandemic, there was a lot of expansion of the offshore revenue. So you know, on an average. For top companies, the share of offshore revenues increased to 53% in 2021 versus a 49.2% in 2020. So that was another focus area that helped companies maintain their uh, operational uh, leverage. Now, uh, apart from that, you know, on the talent front, one of the key strategies that the companies have, uh, you know, focused on is, uh, you know, hiring freshers. So. Uh, they, they, there is a, there is a lot of pressure on margin, and with with rising attrition, obviously getting laterals on board is is a is a challenge on the cost front. So there has been a huge focus on hiring freshers, so that you know they are able to manage the pyramid also. Also, as Prerna mentioned, you know technology companies did record level of hiring this year. Uh, this this is just a, a number which actually. Uh, you know, shows how there has been a rise in the focus of uh, hiring more and more freshers. Um, now, moreover, these margin levers coupled with the rising demand environment from uh, accelerated digital transformation had an overall positive impact both on the client as well as employee metrics. And if you look at the numbers, we see that, you know, re revenue per client has shown an uptrend. Uh, and on the other side, revenue per employee still holds up to last year's level despite you know there are so many new folks which have been uh, added this year so if you look at you know overall uh, overall an accelerated digital transformation and increased companies focus on operational efficiency it played a key role in driving the significant growth that we saw uh, the industry you know reporting this year no, no absolutely that's completely understandable and uh, you know uh, I think there's one more uh, you know segment that I want to move on to, and that's the digitization. I mean, you know, digital digitization acted as a catalyst for growth as well. You know, apart from the innovation that is it has done into the sector. So I think uh, Vandana, uh, you would be the right person to share some light on this particular segment. You know how digitization has uh, monumentally increased. Uh, you know, after the COVID uh, wave and how it has actually impacted the segment in a very positive way, right? So I think uh, if you can share some lights and maybe some data points from from this particular uh, thing. Sure, sure. And you, you know, very rightly, you and Neha both pointed out that there has been a growing demand for digitalization post COVID and also, you know, during the COVID times uh, in the past two years and how that has, you know, really, you know, because of that, we have witnessed spectacular growth in the tech industry. And this can be seen across various levers. Uh, so how, you know, there has been an increasing penetration of uh, digital tech in the overall revenue, overall tech revenue. 
so this you know now digital tech revenue is accounting for over th- almost 30 to 32% of the overall revenues and which was you know uh, 22 26 to 28% two years ago so some companies are also reporting as high as 56% of digital revenues out of their total revenues so you know how we are seeing that there has been an increasing use of uh, cloud ai ml rpa and automation across various aspects in their companies whether it be partnerships or whether it is new contracts or projects or new products as well and one more thing is that the g- digital tech talent pool is also increasing at 25% you know cagr and now it stands at 1.6 million so we can see that one out of three employees are digitally skilled and that's a phenomenal number and also we can see that this digital component is also increasing you know increasing in the contracts that these companies are receiving so nowadays we see over the past year we have seen this trend that increasingly at least two third of the deals have a very significant digital component and some companies are also witnessing this share of digital services in new contracts up by 90% from last year so again phenomenal numbers being quoted here and we can also see that tech you know patents in digital tech have also increased and you know many emerging tech areas are now subject of various uh, pat- patents in india so yes you know 100% agree with you that yes digitalization has acted as a catalyst for growth and innovation uh, in the tech sector in con- continuation to that vandana uh, just want to know which are the sectors in particular that recorded the highest growth uh, out of yeah. you know the ones that you all just mentioned yeah so you know we have seen as this year we have seen you know spectacular high double digit growth and you know not only have we seen a resilience post covid but we have seen a resurgence in growth and that is the title of our strategic review report as well you know resilience to resurgence so you know we start with it services and engineering r&d who both of whom have witnessed approximately 17% growth from last year so this has been owing to cloudification in it services in uh, I, you know in it services and pent up demand for erd so bpm has well has witnessed over 13% growth and this has been due to uh, building specialized capabilities in data monetization and also you know platform based services and automation software products on the other hand have achieved over 19% growth and of course unsurprisingly e-commerce has had a spectacular year which has been growing 39% since last year because companies have you know businesses have rapidly expanded their online presence and online purchases have also been pushed up due to restrictions on mobility etc so yes overall a phenomenal uh, double digit high double digit growth for across you know everywhere looks like the looks like the industries are you know will grow further and uh, but you know i want to just uh, pull in neha again on this uh, discussion so neha what are the some concerns regarding the rising attrition rates i mean how have the companies managed to do that because you know we we're, we're talking about all the positive things that are happening but i think this is also one segment that needs to be highlighted with with such a high uh, you know rising attrition rate how is how have the companies managed to compensate that and you know be in sync uh, with the with the scenario sure i agree with you naman that you know with the rising demand we have seen an increase in the attrition and uh, recent results for the company show that you know the attrition has moved uh, over 25% on an average for fy22 uh, third quarter fy22 and you know we have seen over has been on an up trend you know and uh, it's 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 a challenge no doubt but what we have seen is you know companies are making all efforts to manage it uh, i'll just try to summarize some of the key uh, ways in which companies are trying to manage the challenges that they are facing on the uh, supply side so one of the key ways that they have and i have uh, you know highlighted this previously as well in the conversation that you know they are focusing on hiring more on more, more and more freshers so that once you know but they are able to manage their uh, pyramid and the secondly um, they are able to manage the cost on the other side so we have seen that you know tech companies are even hiring uh, you know fresh talent from non tech domain and uh, training them rather than you know uh, hiring more of laterals so that's that's one of the key uh, strategies that the companies are looking for another thing that they are uh, doing is you know they 
average now tier two tier t cities you know the talent in these cities which has proved to be a successful you know strategy of the last two years you know when where uh, you know majority of the people were working remotely from these cities only so i think that proved to be another successful way out where they are uh, taking talent from these cities the third thing that you know uh, for certain niche skills there there are where the challenges are more uh, peculiar and there is a severe talent crunch companies are relying on uh, hiring subcontractors so that at least for those niche skills they are able to manage the requirements that they have through this limited uh, talent that's available in the market uh, another thing that that i think is again driven somewhere uh, because of remote working and pandemic has a uh, play there that most companies are now in their own manner launching return to work programs for women who had taken a maybe a career break a sabbatical and that has proved a good solution both which is solving for their talent crunch as well as on the diversity front uh, and lastly uh, you know they though they are looking at new talent but you know they are also making efforts towards retaining their existing workforce and for that they are offering you know financial benefits like increments and bonuses and that's that's over and above you know what their annual cycle uh, right. is is planned so over and above the annual mm -hmm. cycle they are giving increments and bonuses they are also looking at employee stock options they are making focused efforts towards you know enhancing employee experience and you know defining their learning and career progression pathways to grow within the organization so they are making sure that you know what the employee which are with them they true. make sure that they are able to retain them well true okay so thank you neha uh, and and thanks vandana prerna for this uh, you know insightful session and as you know as the first part of our series of discussions around the sr 2022 which is the nascom strategic review so i would just you know uh, for our viewers i would just say uh, please stay tuned for a uh, session number 2 which is scheduled very soon and till then please share uh, like and subscribe to our uh, youtube channel and uh, there's more to come so sure. thank you everybody thank you thanks a lot thank you thank you